Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to what is the uh, sixth installment of nine student admissions program uh, panels talking to admitted students about different aspects of life at Boston College. Uh, this is an enhanced version of our student admission program panels because we have a faculty guest with us. So tonight the focus is on the Cannell School of Nursing, uh, which has been around at Boston College since 1947. It's one of the four undergraduate divisions. You've applied to it, you've made it your choice. And tonight we're gonna try to talk about all aspects of life in the School of Nursing at Boston College. Aside from a faculty guest, we have four students, real live. These aren't mannequins, these aren't avatars. These are real live Boston College students that I'm going to lead in a discussion about how they've related to the curriculum, how they've uh, navigated through their life at Boston College, how they've come to understand nursing, what their future may hold uh, in the profession of nursing. Uh, we're going to take some of your questions as well, use the Q&A uh, function on the Zoom call here, and you can send us some things and we'll try to get to them uh, as best we can. Uh, so we have a, a lot ahead of us. We're so thrilled that you're tuning in and thrilled that you've made this decision, your application to you know, follow through with understanding nursing at, at Boston College. Uh, our first speaker is uh, Colleen Simonelli. Colleen is Associate Director of Undergraduate Studies in the Cannell School of Nursing. She also teaches in the School of Nursing. I'm gonna have her kick us off by, well, I gave your name, so that kind of ruins some of the fun. But if you could talk a little bit about what your role is at, at, at Boston College, particularly in the Cannell School, uh, and then maybe from the top down, let's talk about the philosophy. What do you hope students who, who come to the Cannell School learn, gain, uh, understand about nursing and beyond? Sure, thank you very much for having me. Um, yes, I am the Associate Dean for the undergraduate program, so that means that I have the distinct pleasure of working with the currently 435 men and women who um, have chosen the um, Cannell School of Nursing and more importantly have chosen the profession of nursing. I've been a nurse, oh I'm very sorry about that, um, for 30 Two is years. that an emergency? Is that an emergency? A medical it's emergency? Not an emergency. It is. It is like I'd like to kill. <laughs> so, um, so I have been a nurse for um, thirty-two years, and um, my first job um, was in uh, labor and delivery. So, um, working with women who were um, having their babies, and that has been happily. Um, where I have been for the vast majority of my career. In fact, when I started at Boston College 21 years ago, I um, was the faculty member for uh, childbearing clinical and childbearing theory. And, you know, proudly um, said to all of the accepted students that I was, you know, getting to get to know every single one of them um, in their junior year, because that's the year that you do go to um, clinical for childbearing. And, um, and then in 2019, had the opportunity to take over um, the, uh, the mothership um, of the undergraduate program and um, have transitioned to teaching the um, transition course. And so I get to work uh, in it next year, but all three of my other friends, um, we work together in actualizing the role of the professional nurse, where we really talk about the profession, you know, the, the good, the, the bad, and, and where we want it to be. Um, and so I would say in terms of my philosophy for um, the School of Nursing, I keep hearing year after year that we are the most competitive school to get into at Boston College, that, um, that we have the, you know, the kind of best and the brightest of all of, of BC, um, and which just means that you guys have done a ton of work and competed your brains out um, to, you know, to get here. But I really would like that to end as you walk, you know, down Linden Lane for the first time. Nursing is a team sport, and we all have to work very much together as nurses, and we have to work very much together as the healthcare team. And um, and so it really is my general philosophy that all of my students succeed, that all of my students work together, that there isn't the you know cutthroat, you know, trying to trying to get the best grade because somebody else, you know, will be behind you. Um, it is working together because that is the only way that we're going to have a successful healthcare system. And we do need a huge change in our healthcare system. So 
um, the, the men and women that, that come out of Boston College, I really do hope are going to be the nation's leaders in healthcare change and really eliminating the healthcare disparities that currently exist in our healthcare system and in our country. A great introduction. Thank you, Colleen. <clears throat> now let's meet some of the best and brightest, right? Uh, you know, you have 400 plus in, this, in the Canal School of Nursing. Here's the top 1% um, based on whatever criteria we decide on. And we're going to start uh, learning a little bit about you, Anna. So let's learn about uh, who you are and where you're from. And, uh, and then to finish your introduction, why don't you tell us uh, why of all the nursing programs in all the world, you chose Boston College's nursing program? Thanks, Chris. I'm so happy to be able to be here today. Hello, everyone. My name is Anna Chen. I'm currently a um, junior in Snell School of Nursing with a minor in Hispanic Studies. And um, yeah, I'm originally from, I guess, St. Louis, Missouri, but I actually live in uh, Framingham, Mass, with my parents now. So a bit of a change. But um, I guess when it came to picking BC, um, I think what um, Dean Simonelli said earlier about um, nursing being a team sport really um, stuck out to me. I think especially coming from the Midwest to all the way to Boston, I was very um, intimidated by the idea of going to school without anyone I knew from high school and also just being in a city where there were so many of these um, top hospitals. I felt really small, but once I stepped into the campus to visit for the first time, um, I remember actually hearing from a nursing student on one of these um, panels um, to share about how um, her experience in the nursing school had made nursing so personable to her. And she really was able to um, see herself in the program thrive and also not only as like um, a nursing student, but within her peers and the activities that she was involving herself in. So I think I was really excited to um, come to college for nursing, but also know that I wasn't only just going to be a nursing student, I was going to have opportunities to develop in other ways um, in all the um, activities that, I'm, uh, that are offered to BC, which I'm sure we'll talk about tonight too. Absolutely. Thanks, Anna. Great start. <clears throat> We're going to move to you, Kate, and I'd like you to introduce yourself and, and finish your introduction with, uh, has nursing, studying nursing at Boston College been what you thought it was going to be? Or have your ideas about nursing evolved and changed from the beginning to now? Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is Kate Krumenacher. I'm also from St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm a senior in the nursing school this year. And I would say that a lot of my expectations kind of held up throughout my time here, but a lot changed. Kind of a common theme that I've heard amongst nursing students is that we all kind of come in with an idea of what we would like to do, what we would like to study, but there's so many different opportunities here that a lot of times people find something that they're really passionate about and change course, which was definitely the case for me. Um, but I think a lot of that just has to do with BC emphasizing a, a really well-rounded curriculum. And that definitely comes into play, not only in the nursing school, but also with the general core, like we'll talk about, but they really give you opportunities to flourish and maybe find something that you didn't think you would be interested in. But as far as expectations that did hold up, I was definitely... Um, really passionate about having a small class size, which is the case in the nursing school. And as Dean Simonelli touched on, that definitely lends itself well to working together and emphasizing cooperation, which has been really pertinent throughout the four years and something that I've enjoyed a lot. Very good. Great job, Kate. Uh, now we'll go to Emma. And Emma, um, let's learn a little bit about you. And I want you to finish your introduction by talking about of the four years of study, freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, what was the most challenging? What was the most difficult? And, and tell us a little bit why and how you got through it. Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Emma Dalton. I'm also a senior in the School of Nursing, and I'm originally from West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, I think that the most challenging year for me was junior year, specifically the fall of junior year. Um, your clinical rotations will start in spring of sophomore year, and during that semester, you'll have one rotation. And then junior year, it's really common to start having two rotations in one semester. So that's about 16 hours in the hospital a week on top of your three or four other classes. And that was just a big adjustment for me, to be honest. Um, how I got through it, that's a great question. <laughs> um, I think that that is the same boat for a lot of juniors, so similar 
to what Kate and Dean Simonelli were already talking about. It is kind of just leaning on your friends, talking to each other, staying up late, having study sessions, things like that. Um, I remember for one of my clinicals, one girl would always get coffee for everyone before clinical and then we'd all pay her back in the end. Um, so it's just kind of doing little things like that for each other and really working together to make sure we're all, all succeeding, which I think is a common theme here at BC, kind of what everyone has said before. That's great, Emma, thanks. Uh, and last but not least, Michaela. So Michaela, let's learn a little bit about you. And, and your question will be, sorry, you've got to this point, you're, you're a month away from that G word uh, that seniors don't like to talk about, but you're a month away, you made it, just about made it. So tell me who on the faculty of the Canal School gets the thank you note, or at least gets the biggest thank you note to get you to where you are now. So let's learn a little about you and sort of who's been the biggest uh, helper to get you to where you are. Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela Slattery, and I'm a senior from Omaha, Nebraska, also in the Canal School of Nursing, obviously. Um, probably my favorite professor I've had here at CSUN, and I'm sure everyone can attest to this, is Jane Ashley. Um, she teaches mostly sophomores and juniors in adult health one, but she also has, holds her own study groups for um, freshman and sophomore year classes, such as anatomy and pathophysiology. Um, and these study groups you could just go to completely outside of class on your own time. She's such an angel. Um, if you couldn't go to her study group, she would like send you the PowerPoint. She was so nice, really wanted to know more about you as a person, not just as a student. And then she also happened to work on the floor I was in my clinical placement for my sophomore year at Beth Israel. Um, which was so helpful because she was kind of like another nursing instructor to us in a way and she'd always go and bring us into patient rooms or help us observe cool procedures and then she was also my professor junior year in adult health too and that was the year that um, COVID happened that semester and she took the time out of her week to text each one of us in the class individually and check in on us and ask how we were doing so she's definitely probably the favorite professor of everyone in CSUN I would say and she definitely owes the biggest thank yous. <laughs> and I know Dean Simonelli is not offended by that at all even though you know uh, She's my favorite too. <laughs> oh, there you go. It's unanimous, maybe. Uh, <clears throat> but, but Colleen, if you could talk a little bit about uh, how you onboard the freshmen or how you triage the freshmen, if, if that's uh, appropriate. So they all come in, and you know, it, there there must be some sort of either group or sort of uh, you know a, a, a point of emphasis of advising of faculty. Talk a little bit about what happens the first couple of weeks. Uh, to these first year nursing students as they come in, the tone that's set, uh, the, the similar courses that they take, what's important that happens from the faculty and the buy-in from students right away in a freshman year? Sure, that's a brilliant question. Um, so yes, we're gonna meet them all in June and we'll do um, the first year fall advising. Um, and that will just be my undergraduate team. So you really get to know um, the, the five of us. Um, and what you'll hear from, from us loud and clear is that any door is the right door. So you can approach any one of us and, you know, and get your questions answered. Otherwise, we'll let you know, you know where to go if, there, if, if it's not something that we can answer. Um, the, what I really do love um, about the first year students is we do have a specific program for our first year students. It's called Freshman Nursing Seminar. And this is led by my friends like Michaela, Anna, Kate, and Emma. Um, so it's my junior and senior nursing students um, who were in your places, you know, a quick two, three years ago and, um, and know exactly, you know, what you're going through. Um, the nursing program is a little bit, you know, structured. <laughs> Okay, it's a lot structured. So, um, so every single nursing student goes through anatomy and physiology um, and it's attending lab, chemistry and it's attending lab. Um, and then they have that, as I said, that freshman nursing seminar and they get to choose a whole two courses that they'd like to, uh, that they'd like to dive into in terms of uh, the core curriculum. And, um, and so we work with them in the summer to kind of select what would be the best two courses for them, <laughs> big choice. Um, and then when you all get to Boston College in August, uh, you get assigned your academic advisor. And so this is a Jane Ashley. Um, it's one of my faculty um, that you'll be working with um, for the next four years. So this um, faculty member will meet with you a minimum of twice a year, but is you know kind of your friend, confidant, and parent all rolled into one, 
you know, for, um, for getting you through the different things that can come at you as a college student. So it really is a very close personal relationship. Um, each of us is only responsible for about 15 to 20 um, undergraduate students. So we do really, you know, pride ourselves on our academic advising and close relationship with the students. And then as Michaela alluded to, we do really have incredible resources at Boston College in terms of the study groups and in terms of um, the tutoring and extra support services so that everybody you know, succeeds. So in the freshman year, anatomy um, tends to be more challenging than the other courses. And so we have study groups to teach students how to study because that's really you know, what it comes down to is you know, how to really use your time very effectively and develop those, you know, those study habits for deep learning and not just, you know, kind of memorization of things that you can forget because we all do need our anatomy for the rest of our careers. <laughs> so, so that's, that's um, kind of the setup for the beginning of the, of the first year. So to kick it back to you, Emma, <clears throat> based on what, on what the Dean said, does, does that mean that a lot of your close friends are fellow nursing students? Um, I would say uh -huh. yes, but also no. I found that because nursing students are completely integrated into like normal housing. So it's not like you're living around nurses unless you'd pick someone to be a roommate that has the same major as you. So I found that specifically freshman year, I made a lot of friends from my dorm, but also in my nursing classes. So now as a senior, I have a good mix of both, but I would say I live with Five other girls now and two of them are nurses so half my room is nurses um so yeah it definitely kind of works out that way where if you have nursing roommates it can be really great if you have early mornings or same test you can study together and things like that but i definitely think that you can have friends of any major regardless of your major yeah. which i kind of set you up for that emma and i'll go to kate to say you just heard this great program that you're a part of right away as a freshman talking about nursing with great relationship building for faculty, but you've got to take half of your courses that aren't nursing. You've got requirements to fulfill. You might have a minor like Anna talked about that you want to take. Um, how does how, how do those two parts of your brain operate? Is that there's sometimes you're doing this thing that requires a lot of buy-in and grit and 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 love and, and kind of a, a calling. And then you've got to take Napoleonic Wars, or then you've got to take like, you know, you know, Shakespeare. Um, do you like that part of it that you're taking nursing in a liberal arts envelope? Uh, or does it take some getting used to like really preparing your brain to go from one to another? I would honestly say, say both. For me, it was a big draw to BC because I love nursing and obviously that's something I'm passionate about, but I have a lot of other interests too. And I think that the beauty of the core is that there's such a variety of classes to take within it. So while, for example, as you mentioned, history is a core that we have to take, there's such a variety of history classes that you can choose from that you can really tailor it to something that is more interesting to you specifically. Um, regarding studying, I liked the variety of classes. Um, nursing definitely has more of a test-based class system, whereas a lot of the other humanities like history and philosophy probably have a more paper-based class system. So the variety is nice. You get to be doing different things for different classes. And I think it just enhances the overall experience to have all of those different subjects to choose from. <clears throat> and then to move it over to Anna, uh, you said in your introduction, you're a Hispanic studies minor. So it was important for you to incorporate, you know, another department, another area of study with nursing. Why was that important? And how easy is that to balance with your primary study in nursing? Yeah, so um, ever since I started taking Spanish in middle school and high school, I just felt like it was something I knew I wanted to keep, um, keep going um, once I got to college. Because um, as anyone who's ever try learning a language before it's it takes a lot of practice and even now currently this semester I'm not in any Spanish classes because I'm in my clinicals and I'm sometimes I'm, I wake up and I'm like oh my gosh do I still remember how to speak Spanish but <laughs> I think um, I'm really um, blessed that I've had an opportunity to pursue my um, nursing classes my degree but also um, keep up with the language and learn a lot about um, the culture or learn about um, 
Spanish literature. So for example, my sophomore year, um, instead of taking a traditional um, literature core class, BC actually offers a um, course in Spanish and it's a Spanish lit course. So um, I was really able to be challenged in that way and also complete a core requirement. But um, I think it's just been really awesome to kind of stretch myself in a way um, that I um, don't really get um, like linguistically wise in my nursing classes. And then I'm also able to interact with patients I see in clinical who speak Spanish. And I think that's probably the most appealing part of it at the end of the day, just um, being able to connect with more people. Uh, <clears throat> after the freshman year and you move into the sophomore year, it's my understanding that now things start to get far more hands-on. Uh, and you have this beautiful facility in Maloney Hall with state-of-the-art equipment and laboratory setup. Um, Colleen, can you talk a little bit about the setup that you have for hands-on uh, lab experience? And then I'll go to a couple of you like Michaela to talk about what you get out of those experiences too. But, um, but Dean, why don't you get started in terms of sort of you know, visualizing what that space is like for you. You must be thrilled to have what you have uh, for students to learn, at least, you know, somewhat hands-on before they get into a hospital setting. No, it's incredible. I mean, you know, I, as I said, I've been here for a minute. So I was in the old Cushing building. And so to, to have moved in 2015 into Maloney Hall, where we have the Brown Learning Lab with 24, you know, state-of-the-art, telemetry ICU beds um, for all of our sophomores to, to learn on using the equipment that they use in the Boston hospital. So it's, it's you know, a little familiar site once you, once you start your clinical, one less, you know, bit of anxiety to, to come over um, as you go into your first clinical. So just couldn't be more thrilled with the, um, the learning lab, but my baby is the um, high fidelity simulation um, space. And I was one of the first users because, as I said, as a labor and delivery nurse, um, it always bothered me working clinically with my students that as soon as anything kind of exciting was happening in labor and delivery, the student was kind of shoved to the side. <laughs> and, you know, nobody wants you taking care of the bringing a new life into the world. And so I really felt that in order for the students to develop that critical thinking skills and, you know, that kind of just in the moment, how do we make these, these you know, very fast decisions that really are so critical. Um, I turned to you know what aviation had been saying for years was was the key, and that is you know using high fidelity simulators and you're looking at you know really high stakes um, situations. But you know there's really no stakes involved here because you know they can kill the patient and we can bring her back. It's not a problem, and you know we all learn so much more from our mistakes than we do from our, our successes. And so, you know, it is a, just the perfect environment for nursing students. And so we have four high fidelity um, simulation spaces. Um, one of which is my um, birthing mannequin. She gives birth to several hundred babies a year. It's pretty exciting. And, um, and so the students really do get to go in and assess her and decide, you know, what's going on with her and and to manage her her um, her labor and to work with the team, you know we um, have you know the the healthcare team, the midwife, the you know the the, um, an, the anesthesiologist, the pediatrician. We have all of these people that they can you know the lab people that they can call and they can interact with. It's just it's phenomenal. It really does put the students in the driver's seat and really give them that sense of you know accomplishment when they've got through. The most important part of simulation is the debrief. And so having that time where they can go back, sit down in the in the debrief room and really think about, you know, why they did what they did and what went really, really well and what would they like to have, you know, done differently. And that way when they're in the hospitals, they will maximize the care that they provide. Now uh, Dean's super excited about it. The technology is great. The visuals are great. But when a student like like you, Michaela, when a student uses it, is it terrifying for you because it's so realistic and lifelike? Or is it really cool and exciting and you can't wait to put your hands on it? I mean, these labs, they were talking about these labs for years prior to them coming. And now that they're there, are you as excited to use them as professors are to use them to teach you? 
Yeah, so we're definitely very excited to use them. And I feel like they're a great supplement to what we're doing in clinical. It's kind of like a good practice beforehand too, because in the clinical setting, you'll never know if there's an emergency or anything, or if you have to act quickly on your feet. So it's really great. We get to do this in the classroom and we get to do it as a team together. And like Dean Simonelli said, kind of debrief at the end all as a team. Um, I know Emma's also an actor in the sim lab too. If I don't know if she wants to talk on that, but she has access um, or experience on both hands of it. Oh, I'm dying to know what this is, what this is. So yeah, Emma, tell me what, the, what does it mean that you're an actor? What, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, so some of our um, simulations will actually be with real people that are pretending to be patients or they have a script almost. So they're pretending, oh, I have this um, diagnosis and they, you ask them questions and have to kind of figure out what they have. Um, so I am actually one of those actors and I work with the graduate nurse practitioner students. And it's actually really cool to be a nursing student doing that because I work with the family nurse practitioners and a lot of times they will be like going over things or trying to figure out what I had. And it's something I learned about in my peds theory course last semester. So I'm like, I know what I have, like, let's see if you can get there. And it's just kind of cool to, in a way that I'm kind of testing my own knowledge and learning, even though I have the script in front of me, I can actually figure out, oh, those symptoms mean I have this and then see how long it takes the nurse, the NP student to kind of get on the same page as me. Um, so it's cool to be do it from both sides and kind of see how other people are learning through those same experiences. So you have that great space and the great opportunity to have students get hands-on experience without having to be in a hospital. Then there's the process of getting the students in the hospital. So um, just kind of walk us through the sequence. Uh, Dean, why don't you get started? And then I'm gonna ask all of you about some of your experiences in hospital, where you could have been in hospital. So I, I think, you know, Everybody would be interested to know sort of what areas one chooses, if they're chosen, uh, what, what sequence, if any. Uh, walk us through a little bit about what happens next uh, once students are ready to uh, be off campus and take advantage of some of the hospital connections and opportunities that are available to them. Sure, so um, as they said, the sophomore year, spring, every student um, is, goes into clinical in the hospital setting. And that's, uh, um, I think it was Emma who was talking about that, you know, that's that one time a week thing, you know, and then it, then it all, you know, goes into twice a week and all that kind of business. But um, so they go to, you know, our world-class hospitals, Mass General, the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, Brigham and Women's Hospital, um, Newton Wellesley Hospital, Tufts Medical Center, Boston Medical Center. So, um, you know, the brilliant part, I think, about being a nursing student in Boston is that, we don't have one healthcare system, you know, or one medical school, you know, that we're affiliated with. You know, we have Harvard, we have BU, we have UMass, we have Tufts. So, um, and students get exposed to all of those, you know, cutting edge, you know, uh, major research centers. So students go to clinical for adult health one um, in their spring of their sophomore year. And then junior year, depending upon, um, plans for study abroad, or if somebody's an athlete or in ROTC, or, you know, um, we have what we call a flex semester. So they can do two clinicals in one semester, um, or they could do one in one semester and one in the other semester of their junior year. And that typically everybody gets through at least childbearing and adult health too in their junior year. Um, and again, we do try very hard to, to allow students to sample the different hospitals. It is all selected for them pretty much based on, you know, what their other courses are and things like that. So if Anna said to me, hey, I've got a course that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon, then I would have to place her in an evening clinical and that may dictate which hospital she goes to. But, um, but that's, you know, that's the way that we kind of select the hospital placements for them is based on their um, preferences, their um, schedules that, um, that we're trying to recognize that they're college students on top of, on top of this. And, um, and then almost all of our pediatric um, placements are at Children's Hospital. If we need, sometimes we go to Mass General because they have a pediatric floor as well. And psychiatric uh, mental health is all over the place. You know, it's obviously at the number one in the world, McLean Hospital, but it's also, in um, you know, some more community-based placements. It's at St. Elizabeth Medical Center, at um, Beth Israel Medical Center, it's at Walden Behavioral, 
Um, you know, so definitely, you know, looking at different um, types of psychiatric care across the um, continuum from the acute psychiatric needs, you know, to um, more outpatient, maybe addiction services, things like that. And then we have population health, which is literally, you know, out there in the population. So um, it can be a local placement where the, the students are in um, the Boston area and they could be doing school based nursing, they could be doing health community health care nursing, they could be doing visiting nursing association type nursing, but also for population health, we do service immersion trips. And so that has been, um, you know, kind of shifted a little bit in this last year. But um, typically, they can go to um, Santiago, Chile, or um, Nicaragua, or or maybe least favorite words from this last year. But we were able to pivot with all the students that were um, were slated to go abroad during the winter break, and we obviously had to cancel all those. And on Sunday, a group of us is um, heading to Northern Maine to do a service immersion trip um, up in Caribou and Presque Isle. And, um, and so um, we're really excited to be working with Catholic Charities. And so I'm boarding a bus at 8 a.m. On, on Sunday morning with um, 19 of my seniors. So very exciting times. <clears throat> so, so the nuts and bolts of it is, like Kate, like you walk into, a hospital setting and you probably have like some sort of secure name badge and then do you meet someone are you with a bunch of other bc students or do they just hand you a, like a, a clipboard and they say oh you know there's a bunch of things you need to do like to just walk us through like the nuts and bolts of it sure so they definitely do a good job of kind of immersing us into the program and challenging us yet making sure that we're doing things that we're comfortable with and that we have the skills to do so it's really great that we get to do these clinicals with other bc students and at times it's a mix of juniors and seniors so you get to kind of expand your social circle too which is nice but i would say typically there's i would say on average five or six in a group it kind of depends on the hospital and on the clinical but we have a clinical instructor that has um, experience in that area and they work directly with us throughout the day to help us practice new skills, administer meds, that type of thing. And I've loved all of my clinical instructors. They are definitely very welcoming and have a lot to teach us and a lot to show us. So it's great. Anna, you're the youngest of the group. Have you been able to pick up enough information through your experience and through whatever glimpses of life in hospitals you've seen to know how you're going to make your choices? Oh, choices um, about career. About, yeah, about clinic, about your clinical spots and about, you know, where you want to be. Yeah, I think um, BC does a really good job of starting uh, students off with a building of strong foundation in adult health. Um, I know that um, for many of me, like uh, my peers and I, like our sophomore year, we were going to adult health and some people, you know, they may have, might have known from their whole life that they want to do pediatrics or they want to do labor and delivery. And it is at first a little kind of like, I think everyone just kind of wants to get into like the nitty gritty, get into like, what they're interested in. But it's also, at least it was so cool for me to um, learn with my classmates and see my classmates develop um, new interests. Um, I had a friend who she had um, clinical on an oncology floor and just really like really started getting interested into um, working with adults and with um, um, on oncology and gynecology. So I think that was really um, just like some of those moments that you that surprised us in our nursing career that we might go into BC thinking that you're dead set on doing pediatrics, dead set on doing um, psychiatric nursing, but through the course of our clinicals, um, we've learned so many skills, like Kate says, and like the clinical instructors are really with us step by step to guide us through the process. So um, there are definitely some clinicals that um, I felt like, oh, this was this is a lot tougher than I expected. I don't think I'm going to be as interested in this specific particular area going forward, but that's okay because I think it really um, is important for us to go to clinicals and see. Um, what um, see a more like holistic portrayal of what the patient population is like. We're not always going to be seeing um, labor and delivery patients. You're not always going to be seeing um, pediatric patients. So uh, I think BC does a good job in giving um, students really wide variety in their clinicals. 
and just to keep on that on that path, Michaela, you've had a few more hospital experiences than Anna. You're a little bit further along the program. Have those experiences been really helpful in terms of kind of where you're supposed to be as far as you feel um, either you know after graduation or beyond? Have have they had have they had the kind of intent that they're supposed to have in terms of knowing like this is your thing? Or or maybe like Anna also said, maybe this isn't where I see myself. I, I guess those are important experiences to have too. Um, so I definitely got lucky and I found one clinical experience that really solidified um, my interest in nursing. So your senior year here at BC, you do this thing called synthesis and it's basically like a one-on-one -on -one internship. It's just you and one other nurse. Um, so going into senior year, I think Anna actually just applied for her synthesis now. You get to pick like two to three of your biggest interest areas in nursing. And then one of our professors, her name is Beth, will kind of match you up one-on-one -on -one with the preceptor here at BC. So I knew I was really interested in working with the elderly and working in oncology, but I kind of didn't know how to combine those two things together. So I talked with Beth a lot about my interests and she found me a palliative care unit at the Brigham, um, which is a lot of Dana-Farber oncology patients, which is super cool because Dana-Farber is like the best oncology center in the country. Um, and it was on a palliative care unit. So we were really taking care of very sick people, some who are about to go to hospice. Um, a lot of patients were very elderly, which combined my love for geriatrics. And my preceptor, where it's actually, so my nurse, we call her like our preceptors. Um, she was actually a BC 2018 grad. So she was just a few years older than me and she could really show me the ropes. Um, and I absolutely love my experience. I had a phenomenal time. Um, I learned so much because you get to do everything one-on-one. -on -one, and then by the end, you basically act as your own nurse. Um, so by the end of my rotation, she was basically shadowing me um, and I've also been in touch with the nursing director of that floor as well so she had given me her business card at the end and was like oh stay in touch I actually just called her last week so we're going to be in touch um, after I pass my boards and after I graduate but I really had the best experience and so for me I was really lucky where my synthesis placement really solidified what I wanted to do and also brought me to a lot of um, really good connections at the Brigham as well. You said the boards so, so this is something I've learned in my 20 plus years at BC. There is an exam that is important to the next step. Uh, you know, Dean, Dean Simonelli, can you talk a little bit about the boards, what that means, and have Boston College students been generally successful in, in passing the boards? So yes, sure. So the uh, NCLEX is what it's called. It's the National Certifying Licensing Examination. Um, a nursing licensing examination. And so it is um, a very stressful, hideous test, um, but you just have to take it once in your life and, you know, and then, and then you're done and, and you are um, a licensed professional. And because it's a national exam, um, you can, you, you ask which, which state you'd like to be licensed in. Um, and then you um, receive your nursing license for, for that. Now, nursing is a lifelong learner um, sport. And so you do need to commit to um, continuing education. And, and so you do, you know, um, continue taking classes and things like that, but you just recertify every two years from then on. At Boston College, um, we're not worried about our students taking the boards. They um, are generally um, very successful taking the boards. In fact, this past year, where everybody was worried about graduating seniors because of, of COVID and, and only getting the half of their um, spring semester before the, they had to turn to virtual um, clinical and things like that, um, we had a 96% pass rate. And so um, that was, you know, just fabulous. And the um, four people that did not pass their boards on the first time all retook it and passed the board. So everybody's licensed. Um, and so it was, it's really great. We don't really, as I said, ever teach to the test um, because we really feel that it's more important for um, the students to become real nursing leaders and not just, you know, memorize, you know, um, facts for, for the one exam. But it's a competency exam, so you know it's it is definitely passable. But um, you know, if you go in stressed and and if you don't prepare, then you may have to take it more than once. It is not test optional, like Boston College's admissions policy. It is right? not test optional. Not test optional. <laughs> uh, so so you have a, a greater likelihood to pass the boards. You have these great off-campus experiences in Boston, world-class hospitals. You can minor in Hispanic studies. You can have this great mentoring experience. You can make great friends since you work very closely together. 
and you can study abroad. That's why I know Emma came to Boston College because we've talked about it before. You knew a lot of this stuff, but you didn't see a lot of other nursing programs allowing for that. So I do want to give you a second, Emma, to talk a little bit about how you sort of maneuvered your way and how many students at BC in the Canal School maneuver their way to include study abroad. Why was it important to you? I know you only had um, half the time away from us because of circumstances beyond your control. But why was it important? How did it work for you? Yeah, sure. Um, so back when I was looking at schools and ultimately decided to come to BC, um, study abroad was important to me then just because I knew how many nursing schools don't allow you to do that as a nursing student for a full semester. And I had not left the country before coming to college. So I really wanted that opportunity to go abroad for a full semester. Um, so that's what drew me into BC originally. And then once you get here, as Jean and I mentioned before, your junior year, you'll get a flex semester. You'll get assigned either fall or spring. And then you can kind of work with that as you wish. So if you want to go abroad, it'll probably make the other semester of your junior year a little bit tougher. You'll have to squeeze a little bit more nursing classes in. But that flex semester allows you one year abroad not to take any nursing classes if you so choose. So there's a couple of locations where you could incorporate a clinical if you wanted to. I'm so probably in Ecuador, and I think they are just starting one in Ireland, if I'm correct. Um, and so I kind of decided to take the semester off from nursing and did not pursue one of those programs, but I studied abroad actually in Dublin, Ireland as well. Um, and it really was a really amazing experience. I got to take different intro level classes in like psychology, economics, anthropology. Um, I took one focused on like global justice issues. So it was a nice kind of break, but still a very well-rounded way to kind of go into a study abroad semester. And I was completely integrated with Irish students, um, living side by side with them, but then also just a special part of BC abroad programs as if they're run by Boston College, there's typically a BC advisor, or even in Dublin, we had a BC owned building. So I got to meet like 40 other BC students also studying abroad and had that perfect balance with the integration into the Irish school system itself. So I am a big fan of study abroad. <laughs> It's, it's a shame you didn't get the whole time there, of course, but, um, but yeah, I, I know that it's something that was very important to uh, the leadership in the Canal School and that option is important for them and for the students that are there. So we're glad that that option is still there. And three years from now, we hope that option is as, as attractive as it was for you, Emma, when you went uh, 15, 16 months ago. Let's hope that it is. Um, all right, so, so I wanna cover a couple of questions that came in in the chat that are, are fascinating to me. Uh, one, I'm gonna ask you, Kate, someone who is afraid of needles, someone who recoils at the sight of blood, but yet wants to be in a healthcare situation. Uh, is that just something you get used to? Is that something you never get used to, but you see the overarching purpose? Can you, can you relate? Uh, or do you know students that had to relate to that? An inquiring mind wants to know. Sure, I personally was okay with blood and needles, so I can't really speak to what it would be like to overcome it, but I definitely know of students. I'm actually a tutor in the sim labs that we had talked about earlier, and right now they're learning how to do injections. So that's something I've been working um, with them to learn, but there's a couple of them that are just not having it. They don't like giving injections because of the needles, but I just, my best advice would be that, you know, it's for the sake of the patient and it's just something that you'll have to work through and get over. And my dad is actually in the medical field and is terrified of needles. And he said, it took him a while, but you get there in the end. So I would say, just stick with it. Eventually during clinical, you'll have enough experience that it will be second nature and won't matter as much, but I would say, just stick it out. Uh, Michaela, there are a lot of different specialties and areas of nursing. Um, did you come in locked in on one? And if let's say you did, um, how do you get to show your interest and feed your interest? Is it certain professors or classes? Do you have to wait for your clinicals? Um, or is it best to be open-minded and sort of learn about them all before you make any of your hard choices uh, later in your career? What did you do and what do you think is the best advice? Sure. I would say I definitely had an interest in oncology before I was going into nursing school, but I didn't know if that was for me or not. But I would really just advise everyone to keep an open mind because you do rotate through pretty much all of the different specialties. We have about seven or eight placements. Um, so you really get to see every single um, field of nursing you want to do. 
um, like I said, a lot of people change their mind throughout. I know Kate had like a big switch um, in her four years on what she wanted to do in nursing. Um, and that really just attests to like our holistic curriculum and just seeing every single field of nursing. Um, I know I talked about synthesis earlier as well, but if you're really interested in one field, that's a really good way to get your foot in the door. Um, because like I said, you can apply to all the different areas of interest you have and you're assigned one of those. So like if you really wanted to do NICU, you could put in um, your placements for a lot of NICU rotations and you could get assigned one of those. Um, for me as well, I'm really interested in palliative care and there's not really a rotation for undergraduates for that specifically. So I've actually reached out to a lot of the master's professors here in CSUN and they've been super helpful to me. Um, that's a really great, great way. I've been able to expand my knowledge on different areas of nursing. Um, and even my academic adv advisor throughout the four years has been asking me about my interest and she'll be like, oh, talk to so-and-so, they're my friend. They just teach master's students, but they'd be totally willing to help you out. So um, I would definitely keep an open mind, but if you do have a specific interest, there's definitely very easy ways you can learn more about that as well. Uh, uh, Colleen, uh, we're Jesuit and we're very proud of that tradition. And a majority of the Jesuit colleges and universities in the country have nursing schools. Uh, so there's definitely a connection uh, between the Jesuit philosophy and the Jesuit um, uh, you know, values in education in the field and uh, vocation and call to, to nursing. Um, how do you see that manifested in your program? Um, what either from the top down or what kind of things are incorporated into the curriculum that you think are, are directly connected to our Jesuit heritage? Um, just about everything. So I think that, you know, um, the Jesuits and, and nursing are, you know, tightly aligned. It starts with pure personalis, right? So, um, you know, we're going to care for the whole person. We're not caring just for the heart, but we're caring for the soul. We're not caring just for the brain, but we're caring for the mind and the body and, um, you know, really, you know, enveloping the whole person. As Kate and Emma and Michaela can attest, um, we do a lot of reflection. <laughs> um, and, um, and particularly in the, in the class that I teach, but throughout the curriculum, um, you know, I think that the students really are encouraged to, um, to be very deep in their thought about their, um, their curriculum, their um, experiences, and you know, to draw meaning from, from everything. Um, we do follow the Jesuit tradition in terms of retreats. Um, in the second year, spring, when everybody goes off to their first clinical, uh, we have developed a uh, what we call a scrubs retreat. So we bring all of the students together. Again, I'm incorporating my you know my seniors in this, and they um, will come and they'll give talks um, to the to the sophomores and alumni come back and the faculty you know join us and it's a weekend um, away from campus and and really just you know focusing on you know that big transition that it is to be a nurse in the hospital and, and to be starting clinical is that maybe you are afraid of needles and maybe you don't like old people, you know what I mean? Like that's, you know, so, so, you know, is this, you know, for you and is this, you know, um, what you were called to do, but being able to hear that everybody has those questioning times um, is, is so critical and, you know, educating the whole person is, is something that I think that you've heard from, from all of the, um, the women here about, you know, the core curriculum and really becoming, um, you know, educated people in the world and then going out and setting the world aflame, right? So um, that we have the abroad program as, as a great cornerstone to that. Uh, we have the service immersion trips for our seniors. Um, we have a many, and Kate, I think, said that she went on an abroad experience during the summer. So, um, so we have a lot of opportunities for students to go out and to be with with others, um, and that I think you know is is just as Jesuit as you can possibly you know be. True, true. <clears throat> Anna, someone asked about balancing the labs, the off-campus experiences, the classes, and your and your activities. I know you're involved in a couple of of you have you know leadership positions on campus. Is it difficult to juggle? Do you have any advice on how to juggle it all? Uh, I think um, one of the best advice I had received as a freshman was someone um, told me that now that you're in college, like relax a little, because I think in high school, 
so much of it is like college, college, college admissions, like you're doing, uh, of course you're pursuing activities that you enjoy, but sometimes I think for me as a high school student, I felt like maybe I was more obligated to do certain things to, for the college resume or for the admissions process. But now that you, you did the hard work, you're in college now, you, you made it. Um, I, think, um, I think I would just really advise students to find what they're interested in. Um, BC um, in the fall, traditionally we have students um, or a, a student activity fair in Stokes Lawn. And it's just such a really um, exciting time where all the clubs from uh, the school and student organizations set up booths and students can just take a walk around and just get to have a small glimpse of what um, campus life is like. And uh, for me, I, I was able to find out about um, Asian Caucus through, um, through the Student Activities Fair. And I was able to get involved in that freshman year and find a community um, where I was able to um, explore some of my own like racial identity and see, explore part, parts of myself that were separate than my anatomy exam or separate than like the chemistry lecture that, or the chemistry homework. I, um, so I think there is um, plenty of ways to find that balance, but it really comes down to um, freeing yourself to um, have the opportunity to try things that are new and try things that you actually enjoy and not feel that pressure of like, oh, I have to volunteer because it looks good. Like if you are interested in volunteer, pursue that. If you're not, then pursue things that, you, that will bring you joy and will add to your workload because you are gonna be busy as nursing students. Good, good, great answer, Anna, thank you. <clears throat> Dean, if I could ask you to, to uh, someone asked about how many, when you add them all up, how many clinical hours does a student graduating have? Is that a number that you you know? It's roughly 900 and, or close to a thousand clinical hours when, when all is said and done. Okay, okay. Uh, and then um, my last question will be to the seniors. Uh, the nursing program's tough. You know, the English majors have it easy. The communications majors have it easy. You guys balance like in your senior years, like major commitments off campus with people that other people don't. Have you been fulfilled? Is it worth it? You, you really did take the toughest road through Boston College and now you're just about there. Has it been what you were looking for? Emma, are you satisfied? Has it been what you wanted? I would say I'm very satisfied. It's definitely been what I wanted. Um, I do think that it can be very like, when I really think about it, sometimes when I'm getting back from a clinical or something and my roommates are like, oh, how was your day? What did you do today? It's like, I don't really know if you wanna know what I did today in the hospital. Like, it's just, I don't know if you wanna hear that. So it's kind of funny to come back from the hospital to a college setting um, and just kind of think about how much more work maybe we are doing than our peers. Um, but I wouldn't have had it any other way. I think. The nursing school has really taught us a lot about what it means to be a great nurse, but also just a great human being who will make a difference in society, whether that's in healthcare or not. Um, so a lot of the skills I've learned, whether it's caring for people or being there as emotional support, I can apply to other aspects of my life. And even just talking to my friends, talking to my parents, anything like you can always find a way to incorporate nursing skills. Um, and that's really great. I think that there's communication aspects that I would not have gotten elsewhere um, that I've gained from being a Boston College student, specifically a nursing student. And Kate, I know from you, um, you're gonna continue going to school in nursing. Uh, so obviously you found something that you've really enjoyed and, and you'd like to do something more. Uh, what, what is your goal, uh, both academically and professionally? Yeah, so definitely, I, I mentioned I had a kind of a big switch. I was originally interested for like my first solid two and a half years of being a nurse anesthetist, but I took my psych clinical and absolutely fell in love with that. So I'm getting my doctorate in psychiatric nursing next year, which is really exciting. Um, but just kind of echoing what Emma said, I think that what's so special about BC is that they are so dedicated to seeing you thrive in what you're interested in. And obviously BC, gives you the academic skills to succeed in taking your NCLEX and be a good nurse. But I think that more importantly, it's a really special community of passionate people who really care about the field and care about pursuing something that's meaningful to them. So 
while I'm grateful for all of my classes and the opportunities that I've had in clinical, I definitely think that the community has really pushed me to strive for what I want and what I think I would be good at and what I'm passionate about. So overall, I am definitely satisfied in coming here and it's fulfilled all of my expectations. And Michaela, you'll get the last word. Um, I, you allowed me to be a reference for you for a job in a healthcare facility last spring. And I remember talking to the people there saying, she's smart, she's funny, she's she's one of us at BC. I'd let her do anything in, in the building. I'd let her, wh whatever you want her to do, she'd let her do it. Um, I would guess in all, all of our conversations that this has been a really good fit for you and you've been really happy and fulfilled. And, and where has this led you to? What, what do you hope happens after BC? Yes, um, I definitely agree with every single thing Kate and Emma said. I can't really top that. And like Chris said, I've really definitely had the best four years here at BC. He's known me since the beginning and, and he can really attest to as well how much I love nursing and how much I love this school. But I'm really grateful that BC Nursing's program really just gave me such a good foundation um, to be a nurse for the rest of my career. And I really just get so much joy out of truly helping people every day. I feel like that's what makes things worth it because like, yes, I could be sleeping in like a normal person or like all of my other friends here at BC or like spend a little more time like on TikTok throughout the day. But even those days where I have to wake up at like 5 30 a.m i still get to go to go to clinical but like i'm vaccinating people this semester so i'm literally going and saving lives and that's so much better than you know laying on the couch or waking up um at a normal human being hour so i really definitely had the best four years and i'm just grateful that bc nursing just gave me such a great foundation to go out and help people for the rest of my life that's great um all of it was great and, and think about it. you have bc scrubs you have a, you have your own stethoscope oh i mean really the the, the gifts the gifts just keep on coming uh, this has been fantastic. And you guys really did a great job, all of you. And we didn't talk about research opportunities. We didn't talk about graduate opportunity. I mean, there's so many things that we didn't speak about. Uh, the Cannell School uh, of Nursing's website um, is really intuitive in terms of getting more information. So uh, I urge all of you to do that. Um, if you guys, as I wrap up, if you want to put your email addresses in the chat, um, if you want to keep the conversations going, with Anna, with Michaela, with Kate or Emma. I'm sure they'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys might have going forward. For many of you, you've got a couple of weeks to make a big decision. You're probably looking at other nursing programs around the country. Um, this is a pretty special place um, to hear from faculty and to hear from students about not just having the resources, but accessing them and doing such great things with them in the setting of a great university that, that has all kinds of resources for students' development and growth. Um, it really is a special spot. Uh, so thank all of you panelists, you did a great job. Thank you, Adeen Simonelli, uh, I really appreciate it. And to hang up on that medical emergency right away, um, that really shows where your heart is tonight uh, about yielding great students to BC. That is exactly where my heart is. <laughs> um, and those of you that tuned in, thanks so much. We do have a couple of more programs as the month winds down. Uh, next week, we'll talk about the spirituality of Boston College. We'll talk about clubs and organizations and how students navigate socially. And then there's all kinds of events going on, both virtually uh, and recorded on our, on our website. So you shouldn't lack for information if you need it, but it'll be hard to beat this one. Uh, great job, everyone. Thanks for, for viewing. We'll see you soon. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Great job.